Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. I make all the music boxes you see on this channel, Music Box Rocks. I want to share with you a breakthrough I've just had in generating these strips automatically using a Cricut cutting machine. I'm going to show you how it's done and I'm going to walk you through the process of making them yourself. Now for those of you who are new to the hobby, this is a DIY music box. You can buy it for about 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon and it comes with these paper strips. And if you punch holes in the paper strips, you can run it through the music box and play just about any song you want. Now I've made over a hundred of these and you can watch them for free on this YouTube channel. Everything from the Jeopardy theme song to Chopin to Star Wars and even all six minutes of Bohemian Rhapsody. And I post all of my charts online. So in theory, you should be able to download the chart and make them yourself. But there's a problem. There's a fair amount of manual labor that goes into copying the circles onto a paper strip by hand and then punching the holes by hand. It's long and tedious manual labor and the little chads get everywhere, which is really annoying. Now, like many people who make these music boxes, I was inspired by Martin Molin, who built the Marble Machine on YouTube. His band Wintergotten incorporates a DIY music box in their live show. And a few years ago, he posted a YouTube tutorial on how he creates them by punching the holes laboriously by hand. Now, at the time, he was searching for a way to automate the process, and lots of people collaborated on possible solutions, but None of them totally hit the mark, in my opinion. Now, since that video, two things have happened that have made this process a lot easier. The first is a website, musicboxmaniacs.com. This is where I compose all of my music boxes and where I post all of my charts for free, and hundreds of other creators have done the same. The second is this, the Cricut. It's a consumer level cutting machine used for scrapbooking and greeting cards and stickers and all sorts of other crafty things. Now, I am not a crafty person, but my sister gave this to me for my birthday and I realized it's just what we need to automate this process. Now, if you need general tips on how to use a Cricut, please consult the thousands of other blogs and YouTubes and TikToks and Pinterests that are out there People that are much craftier than me can help you much better than I can. But in this one specialist use, I can show you how it's done and walk you through the whole process. The first step is to go to musicboxmaniacs.com and look for a song that you want to make into a music box. So for this example, we're using the Grand Vols, otherwise known as the Nokia ringtone. So you click on the song and hit the play button to hear what it sounds like. If you're satisfied, then click on the export button and choose DXF, which is the file format for CAD, computer-aided design. Specify the music box you want. In my case, all of my songs are composed for a Grand Illusions 30-note F-scale music box. And then hit download. Now, you do need to make a few minor tweaks to this file, and for that, you'll need a vector editing program, like Adobe Illustrator. Now, I'm assuming if you have a Cricut, you probably have Adobe Illustrator. So, open the DXF file in Illustrator, and you'll see it has the outline of the strip and all the holes. It also has this interior box, which we don't need, so you can just click on it and hit delete. So the first tweak is we need to make the starting edge a diagonal line. This helps to physically reset all the times of the music box so they're all ready to play your melody. Get your direct selection tool here and just drag the top left point, oh, about an inch or two. Second, we need to make the holes bigger. If you cut this file just as is, the holes will be far too small. Trust me, I know. So hit Control A to select everything and then hold shift to deselect just the outline so it's only the holes that are selected. And then go up to transform each. It's important you do it this way so that the holes are all transformed individually rather than as a group. Type in 133% in both horizontal and vertical and make sure that this, the center point, is selected and hit OK. Bingo! All the holes are the correct size now. 
Finally, hit Save As, and under File Format, choose SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic, which is the format that Cricut understands. Now, in order to physically cut something with the Cricut, we have to use their software, which is called Cricut Design Space. So once you've opened the Cricut software, click Upload, and then upload the SVG file you just created. And then click on the button that says Insert Image. It will show up on your workspace in red. Don't worry about that, the color isn't important. But there are a couple tweaks we need to make here to get it to work properly. If you just hit the Make button right now, Cricut would very intelligently take your hundreds of circles and line them all up right next to each other to maximize paper efficiency. Thank you very much, Cricut, but that's not exactly what we had in mind. What you need to do is click on the group of circles and click the Weld button. This will simplify the design so the holes are all seen as one object rather than hundreds of smaller objects. And then select both the welded circles and the strip outline and click the Attach button, which will guarantee that the holes and the outline are placed correctly relative to each other. Finally, with this whole group selected, click on Rotate 90 degrees so that the pointy end is up. Now let's talk about the physical setup. I use a Cricut Explore Air 2, but chances are this will work with any cutting machine, really. The Cricut comes with a 12 by 12 inch cutting mat, but you're going to need something bigger. You're going to need a 12 by 24 inch cutting mat. Now, when I first started experimenting with this, I thought, well, why don't I just take this blank paper strip that comes with the music box and just put it right on this cutting mat. But unfortunately, no matter how carefully you try to align the strip with the edge of your mat and get it just so, the tolerances are way too loose to get anything to line up accurately. The Cricut has great precision, but not great accuracy. In other words, it can make very precise cuts, but it can't place those cuts accurately in physical space on your mat. So here is the solution. We just use blank poster board. This I just got from Walmart. It's an eight pack of art skills, white heavyweight boards. And let's just cut a four inch or so strip from the poster board, something like this. Now I can hear the crafters yelling at me through their computers, use a paper cutter. I don't need to. The Cricut does all the precision cuts for me. And then you wanna place it glossy side down on the corner of the mat. I've found that that really helps the little chad stick to the mat when you're done cutting. Make sure it covers the top left corner, press it really down, and you're good to go. Now, can you use other types of poster board? Well, yeah, I experimented with just about everything. If it's too thin, it won't go through the music box mechanism, it'll just spin its wheels. If it's too thick, the Cricut blade won't go deep enough to cut the holes, so be careful. So once the mat is ready, click the Make It button, Make sure the dial on the machine is set to poster board. Hit the advance button to roll the mat into the machine and hit the flashing Cricut button to start cutting. All right, cutting is done, so now it's time to remove this outer frame from the sticky mat. And you can toss this in the recycle bin. Now the strip itself. Now feel free to use some tools when you do this. This is the official Cricut endorsed poking device. So can use that to start peeling it up, but you want to be careful not to bend the strip too much. You don't want it to curl, you still want it to be flat. So you can kind of leverage yourself to peel it backwards like this. 
And if you see, the strip is peeling up and the holes are staying stuck to the mat, exactly the way we want. And there we have it, folks, a finished music box strip with a minimum amount of manual labor. And if we just want to confirm that this works, Beautiful. And then as far as the chads that are stuck to this mat, well, Cricut makes this handy dandy scraping tool. Honestly, you could use anything, but eh, I like the official scraping tools. And you just take it and... This probably will not make any ASMR videos anytime soon, but it is effective. Get chads. All right, there we go. Free, clear, ready for the next one. Now, for those who want to venture deeper, I have two levels of extra credit. The first is length. Now, as you can see, this music box strip is pretty short. Based on the 23 and a half inches you have to work with on the cutting mat, you really can only use this method for short melodies. What if you had a longer one? Well, you can print multiple strips on one mat. In fact, you can fit four abreast on one mat. So for this example, we're gonna use the theme music to The Mandalorian. I created this separate template in Adobe Illustrator, which already includes the diagonal line at the beginning. And at the top and bottom of each strip, I designed these tabs and slots to hold these strips together, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Now, this takes a bit of mathematics to perfectly segment this strip into four pieces without missing any of the holes, so I'm just gonna time-lapse it through here, but I may cover this process in detail in a future video. Now, sometimes the Cricut software may struggle with these complex files. After all, the Mandalorian has more than a thousand holes to cut, but believe me, it's better than punching them all by hand. And as proof, here is a cutting montage. And voila, we're left with four beautiful strips. And as you can see, we have some, uh, some stowaways here, which we can just use the handy dandy poking tool. Believe me, poking one or two of these holes is much preferable to punching a thousand of them, which is what you would be doing otherwise. Now that we have four of these strips, how do we connect them? Well, if you'll recall, in the Adobe Illustrator file, we programmed in these tabs. And as you can see, they match up perfectly. This locks them in place. And then we just use masking tape. I like to use white masking tape because it goes better with the white of the music box strip and we just cover over those tabs. Flip it around, cover the backs of the tabs. And with one piece of tape, that is rock solid. That is not going anywhere. Now, you might be able to spot the problem, which is our tape has covered over some of the holes that we cut. So we do have to do a little bit of post-processing here as well. But again, these little manual punches are well worth the time of getting most of them done automatically. And there we have it, folks. A complete music box strip 
of the Mandalorian theme, minimal fuss, minimal muss. And just to confirm, well, that is about the most beautiful thing I have ever heard. Now, are you ready for the second level of extra credit? Now, this cricket has two implements, one for cutting and one for drawing. So if you're ambitious, you can program the cricket to not only cut the holes, but also decorate your music box strip. Now, there are people out there on YouTube who decorate their strips by hand, like these masterpieces created by Box of Music, but she does it by hand. I want the cricket to do the work for me. So, for the Nokia ringtone, I've created this Nokia logo and artwork of the 3310 phone. Now, it must be said, the Cricut uses vector files only. You can't just import a JPEG and print it using the Cricut. Now, the intricacies of vector illustration are, again, the topic for another video. But, once you've saved this as an SVG, import it into the Cricut software and Make sure that the artwork group is set to draw instead of cut. Open your Cricut machine, put a pen in the holder, and then hit that make button. And you're left with this beautiful artifact right here. It's beautiful and it's musical. Now I've kind of dabbled in all sorts of these. I made one of Daniel Johnston's artwork here. This is Story of an Artist. I've also made one of my first computer, the Texas Instruments 994A. And you don't know unless you know. And in honor of Eddie Van Halen, I made this one out of red poster board and white tape and then drawing all the diagonal lines on it so it'll look like his guitar. So really the possibilities are endless. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I want to thank Martin Mullen of Wintergotten for inspiring me to make these music boxes and now hopefully we've made it a lot easier for you to make yours.